Hello, my name is Malikan Tanieri. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering Department here at the University of Illinois. And today I'm going to present my work on a recent method we developed on uh, nanoparticle trapping. And this method we call a uh, hydrodynamic trap. And so I'm going to talk about the hydrodynamic trap for particle trapping. Using this method, we can uh, we use uh, fluid flow to trap and manipulate particles, micro and nan nanoscale particles, and we can manipulate particles in two dimensions. And this movie shows an example of uh, trapping and manipulating at 2.2 micron fluorescent bead uh, using fluid flow. And now I'm going to describe how uh, this method works. Hydrodynamic trap is a microfluidic method and it's based on a microfluidic device. It's a, the microfluidic device is a hybrid device consisting of a cover slip, a glass cover slip, and a PDMS lab. Uh, PDMS is an elastomeric material which is transparent. Um, and on the top left you see a picture of the device uh, with the fluidic connections tubing um, connected to the device. Uh, and it's mounted on, a, on an inverted research microscope. And on the right, you see a micrograph of the same device. And uh, the device has two uh, main layers. Uh, one of them is colored in red. And that's the fluidic layer. That's where the fluid flow and the uh, trapping occurs. And I highlight the trapping region with a dashed box. And the second layer is uh, the black layer shown. And uh, this black layer is a, is a control layer uh, where we have pneumatic uh, membrane valves. And uh, these membra membrane valves control, help control the fluid flow in the fluidic layer. And on the bottom right, you see the working principle of the, uh, of the membrane valve. Uh, basically, the, mem uh, the membrane valve consists of a channel which is sitting on top of the, of the fluidic channel. And a, a thin membrane separates the two layers. And when you uh, apply uh, pressure on the top layer, it expands and bends the uh, membrane onto the fluidic, uh, fluidic layer, thereby uh, acting as a, an active valve. So we, uh, we uh, dynamically control the pressure acting on the, uh, on the top channel uh, to control the active uh, uh, area uh, cross-sectional area in the fluidic channel, thereby manipulating the fluid flow or the flow rate uh, in the fluidic channel. And uh, this uh, whole experimental setup, the microfluidic device, is, uh, is basically placed on a, a microscope, uh, on an inverted microscope stage, and then everything is imaged through an, a, a camera, and everything is automated through a computer system where we control the syringe pump, the camera, and the pneumatic valves that controls the, uh, the membrane valves on the chip. Hydrodynamic tra trap uh, is based on uh, so-called planar extensional flow. Uh, and uh, th this type of flow is generated at the uh, junction of two perpendicular microchannels where two laminar opposing uh, laminar flows meet at the microchannel junction and exit in the perpendicular direction along the, uh, along the perpendicular, perpendicular axes. And uh, this type of uh, flow creates a, a stagnation point at the, at the microchannel junction, uh, which is typically, uh, uh, which has a, a zero point velocity um, at, the, at the center of the ch channel. And the movie on the right shows uh, fluidic streamlines we basically flow a, uh, a, micro, uh, a bead solution through the microchannel, revealing the position of the stagnation point. And the uh, fluid flow around the stagnation point is well defined. And the fluid velocity depends on uh, a, a, a parameter called strain rate, uh, which characterizes the uh, flow rate and the uh, uh, channel dimensions and also distance from the stagnation point. So each po uh, the velo fluid velocity at each point around the stagnation point is well defined. And this type of flow creates a semi-stable flow potential, which is stable along the flow in direction and unstable along the flow out direction. 
along the flow in direction, uh, everything, uh, all the particles are pushed towards the stagnation point, whereas along the flow out direction, uh, everything can readily escape. Um, so the underlying principle of the hydrodynamic trap is to place a particle at that uh, semi-stable point, which is the stagnation point. And um, in this case, uh, the particle would be stable along the flow in direction. However, it's going to be unstable along the flow out direction. Uh, and uh, what we do is to uh, stabilize the particle, we apply controls, uh, control algorithms, and manipulate the flow along the flow out direction to contain the particle at the stagnation point. One can draw an analogy between our system and an inverted pendulum system. For a pendulum system, there are two equilib equilibrium points. When one of them is the stable equilibrium point, which points to, uh, in the direction of gravity. And there's another equilibrium point, which is unstable. And it's opposite to the direction of gravity. And uh, as you can see, um, in the stable equilibrium, if you uh, this, uh, perturb the system, uh, the system goes back to the equilibrium point, whereas in the unstable direction, uh, un an unstable equilibrium state, which is, uh, um, which is the inverted pendulum case, uh, the, if the system is perturbed, it never goes back to the or, uh, original state. So uh, if we want to draw an analogy between our system and the pendulum system, I along the flow in direction, we have the stable equilibrium. And along the flow out direction, we have the unstable equilibrium. However, it's possible to uh, make the unequilibrium case uh, stable uh, by applying controls. And this movie shows, the movie on the bottom right shows this uh, for an inverted pendulum system. Basically, if you have a robot, which manipulates the position of the base of the pendulum, you can, uh, uh, you can make this uh, inverted pendulum uh, stable. And this is what we do with our system. Uh, it's pretty much similar to the inverted pendulum case. If the system is destabilized uh, by uh, Brownian motion, for example, if the particle is moved out of the, uh, of the target uh, of the trap center, we manipulate the flow along this unstable direction to put the particle back uh, at the trap center. And we can do this in two dimensions. So we can manipulate the stagnation point in uh, both the flow in direction and the flow out direction. And this enables us to um, uh, trap a particle, confine a particle, and then manipulate it in two dimensions at the microchannel junction. And uh, the two. Uh, and uh, the four different cases uh, are shown on the right, where you, uh, you see from A, B, C, and D, uh, we can uh, have the stagnation point at the four different quad quadrants uh, at the microchannel junction, and thereby uh, being able to trap and manipulate the particle uh, into the at the microchannel junction. And uh, furthermore, uh, we can. Uh, characterize what the, uh, how well we can trap a particle at the microchannel junction in both directions. So in, in this experiment, what we have done is we have trapped a, a single bead and then moved it along uh, array elements, uh, which is four by three, uh, three uh, positions along the flow in direction and four positions along the flow out direction, and then looked at how well we can confine a single particle. And we see that by changing the uh, strain rates, uh, the flow parameters, we can uh, change the pseudo potential that's acting on uh, a trapped particle. So basically, by increasing the flow rate, we can increase uh, the precision of confinement along the flow in direction, whereas uh, we decrease the, uh, that precision along the flow out direction by doing so. And in this manner, we can basically tune the trap potential, the pseudo trap potential, uh, by uh, manipulating a single parameter, which is the strain rate. And uh, let me talk about the trapping mechanism briefly. So uh, how we do the, uh, how, how we manage the flu fluid flow at the microchannel junction to trap a particle. And briefly, the control algorithm uh, consists of five steps. The first step is, we image the microchannel junction 
to capture an image of the uh, micro channel junction and uh, localize the uh, particles uh, and calculate the position of the particle with respect to trap center. And then we determine a new stagnation point to push the particle to that uh, predetermined trap center. <coughs> and we calculate this by, uh, we calculate this so that the projection of the particle position always, always resides between the stagnation point and the trap center along the unstable direction. In this case, once we uh, activate uh, this control and then move the stagnation point, then uh, the particle now resides on a new uh, streamline and it follows this streamline and move forwards and then we update the, uh, st uh, the position of the stagnation point and then implement this and then the, st uh, and the particle moves further and we do this actively many times uh, every second until the particle reaches the trap center. Once the particle is trapped uh, basically, the particle position uh, and the stagnation point overlaps with the trap center. So everything is uh, situated at one uh, point at the microchannel junction. Now, I would like to briefly describe how we manipulate the fluid flow at the microchannel junction. And we do this by manipulating the relative flow rates through the outlet channels. For example, uh, consider this case where the flow resistances of the outlet channels, the top and the bottom, are equal. In this case, the stagnation point will be exactly at the center of the microchannel junction. However, if we make the uh, bottom channel more resistive, then the more flow would couple to the top channel, thereby moving the stagnation point towards the bottom channel. And similarly, if we make the uh, top channel more flow resistant, uh, the stagnation point will move towards that channel. And we make this manipulation through the, one of the membrane valves uh, located on the device, on one of the outlets. And we also uh, have a constriction on the top of the, uh, on the top channel. And uh, in this way, we use a single valve to manipulate the relative flow rates through the bottom and the top channel. And this is, this movie basically demonstrates this. We flow a bead solution through the microchannel junction and we change the relative flow rates or the flow resistance of the top and the bottom channel to move the stagnation point up and down along the unstable direction. In this manner, uh, we can generalize this to the, uh, the stable flowing direction and obtain 2D uh, particle manipulation. So um, the picture on the top right shows uh, a, a microfluidic device with two valves, one of them is located on one of the outlet channels and the other one is located on one of the inlet channels, which helps us to uh, manipulate the, the stagnation point along both directions. And if we do this, uh, we can trap a single particle and move it around. Uh, the top right example shows at time is equal to T0, we st uh, trap a particle and then we start moving around to trace uh, the letter C. On the bottom, we can do more complicated geometries, and uh, we spell the letter, <coughs> the word small, and here the connecting lines, the connecting trajectories between the letters are not shown for simplicity. So how does this method compare with the existing method? OK, so um, using this method, we can trap individual particles and for long time scales. Uh, the trajectory on the left shows long-term stability of a trapped particle, so we can trap and isolate particles. Um, and this uh, trajectory shows trapping for uh, about 10, around 10 minutes. And uh, now we can uh, trap particles and cells for uh, hours uh, for long time scale experiments. And the uh, typical tra uh, confinement precision is uh, less than a micron for a micron sized particle. And uh, for nanoscale particles, um, it's also on the order of microns. Now, how does this uh, trapping method compares with the existing methods based on uh, optical and magnetic um, counterparts? Um, in terms of when we compare the trap stiffness, the trap stiffness is roughly on the order of 10 to the minus 3 to 10 to the minus 4 piconewtons per nanometer, which is comparable to the 
magnetic and the electro magnetic uh, and the electrical uh, electrokinetic uh, counterparts uh, and uh, of course optical traps uh, uh, have much higher uh, can have much higher trap stiffness compared to this so to summarize uh, we uh, we basically developed a new trapping technique which is based on purely fluid flow and this method does not uh, rely on optical magnetic or electric fields and we can trap micro and nanoscale particles and this enables free solution trapping of uh, micro and nanoscale particles. And what are the advantages of this method? Uh, first of all, uh, this method does not impose any mat uh, materials uh, uh, properties on particles that are trapped. For example, for magnetic particles, uh, for magnetic traps, uh, the particles should be magnetic. Uh, therefore, uh, this method uh, has a larger variety of particles that can be confined. Uh, another uh, important advantage of method, uh, this method is since it depends on a semi-stable flow uh, potential, um, you can basically trap a single particle from a crowded solution and um, isolate, it from a, uh, isolate it from the rest of the sample. Uh, so, for, for, for example, you can have a crowded cell solution, you can trap a single cell and then wash the rest uh, out uh, to confine and uh, examine or study that, uh, the behavior of that cell. Also, uh, uh, not like the optical and the magnetic counter counterparts, the trapping force scales with particle radius rather than particle volume. Therefore. Um, uh, this uh, trapping method may enable a facile trapping of small nanoparticles and, and, and by small I mean less than 50 nanometers. And uh, this device um, is basically based on a simple integrated microfluidic device uh, and it, uh, since it doesn't involve any uh, optical, magnetic or electric uh, fields, it may enable uh, less perturbative measurements for uh, biological materials and cells. And furthermore, since it's flow-based, uh, we can basically exchange the medium of the trap particle for um, a variety of interesting examples, uh, experiments. And uh, this is a, a movie which shows uh, and trapping and isolation of a single particle from a sample solution. And we show the flow in direction and the flow out direction. And what we do is we do on-demand trapping of uh, several particles back to back. So we trap this particle. So I'm going to show you an example movie where uh, we do on-demand trapping of um, microscale particles. So this movie shows basically the micro channel junction uh, and we demonstrate the flow in and the flow out direction and uh, we will be trapping individual particles and letting them go. Um, so we'll do uh, on-demand trapping of three individual particles. So here's one, here's the second one, and here's the third one. So this allows for trapping individual target particles in a sample solution and isolating them um, from the rest of the sample. And eventually we let this one go as well. Using this method, uh, we can trap particles and also uh, single molecules. Uh, and this example shows a single uh, double-stranded DNA molecule which is uh, fluorescently labeled and here what we do is we trap the particle, we initiate the flow and we st stretch it and then we stop the flow and let it relax. In this manner we can trap and isolate single uh, DNA molecules and these DNA molecules serve as, um, as uh, models for uh, single molecule polymer dynamics. And using uh, single DNA molecules as, uh, uh, as um, model polymer uh, 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 model polymers, where we can basically either uh, uh, stretch a trap chain and look, uh, or uh, we can do stretch and relaxation dynamics, or we can put any variable strain input uh, to study the uh, stretching and relaxation dynamics of a single molecule. 
Also, this method can work as a single cell microbioreactor. We can basically trap and isolate single cells and then watch them grow over time. So in this example, we are basically uh, isolating single E. coli cells and then manipulating uh, the fluid medium around them. So we can uh, expose them to different uh, uh, drug concentrations or, um, or metabolites and then uh, watch their response. So in this specific example, uh, we would like to study cell response to multiple inducer pulses and uh, uh, watch the protein exp expression over time. And in this manner, it can be a nice tool for uh, systems uh, biology um, where you can do single, uh, where you can do, uh, test the robustness of a system at the single cell level. Uh, we are also currently uh, trying to push the limits of this method for uh, smaller particle trapping. And uh, currently, the smallest particle we can uh, confine is a 100 nanometer particle. And this is an example of that. So we basically confine a 100 nanometer fluorescent bead. Uh, and of course, the smaller particles show uh, larger Brownian fluctuations. And <laughs> in this manner, uh, we can do basically trapping and then exchanging the medium of uh, these particles to study uh, different phenomena. And uh, we also want, uh, so I also developed a, a Brownian dynamic simulation to see uh, what would be the limit of partic particle trapping, uh, the smallest particle we can trap using this method. And uh, it l looks like using the current setup and the control mechanism uh, we would be able to trap uh, as small as 10 nanometer particles. And this basically assumes that we can um, uh, basically uh, track these particles, which is the experimental challenge at this point. And uh, based on uh, this tool, uh, this method, we developed a, uh, a tool for NanoHub. Uh, Nano uh, and uh, you can uh, find this tool uh, under the toolbox, and, uh, and the name of the tool is Hydrodynamic Particle Trapping. Uh, if you go to NanoHub uh, website, um, you can uh, find and run this tool. Um, and uh, this, basi this tool basically allows to, al allows, would allow you to explore how hydrodynamic trapping works and what are the important parameters that affect the uh, trapping um, uh, a performance. So in, in this uh, simple um, tool, we basically provide you with uh, uh, different changing different parameters. For example, you can change particle size. You can change uh, several uh, control parameters, such as delay, f feedback delay, and also uh, the, p uh, the control gain. And also, you'd be able to. Uh, uh, see how Brownian dynamics affects the particle trapping. You can change the temperature and also you can change uh, the flow parameter, the strain rate, epsilon dot, uh, and see uh, how particle confinement is affected by these parameters. Uh, and this uh, basically assumes uh, planar extensional flow and then you can locate, the, you can position the particle uh, at any spot uh, at the microchannel at, at a junction uh, and then uh, see how the particle would behave. Um, uh, it's a nice tool to explore how hydrodynamic trapping uh, works. I think I'd like to stop here, and uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention.